Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today is going to be awesome. Today is going to be awesome. Um, I hope that you have a very good day, a mighty day. I have some good news for you for my little divine interruption. I, it's so weird saying that because yesterday I was sitting with the Lord and he told me to go live every day. He gave me uh, instructions to go live every day. And so I was like, well, what am I going to talk about? He said, don't worry about that. Go live every day. And I was like, okay. He was like, it's called divine interruption. So I said, okay, I'll do it, whatever. But last night, um, he gave me a dream. And it wasn't even last night. I'm sorry. It was this morning. This morning, it, it woke me up out of my dream and I immediately had to get up. But um, let me tell you the dream. So I was at a friend of mine's house. I knew the lady. Uh, she was standing on the porch. Me and my son was in the yard and we were getting ready to leave. And so uh, we were talking, exchanging words. And then I looked down at the dog because there was a dog. And I looked down at the dog, but I seen this huge rat eating on something next to the dog. And I was telling her, oh my goodness, look at the dog. I mean, look at the rat, look at that rat. And so she was like, where is it? Because from her angle, she could see the dog. But the rat was so big. I'm like, why you can't see this rat? Because it was bigger than the dog, but she couldn't see the, the rat. So from my angle, I could see the rat, but I could see the, the outlining of the dog. So um, me and my son, I was turning to leave because just keeping it real, I'm afraid of rats, mice, spiders, snakes. I mean, you know. So we were turning to leave. And as I turned and we looked down, there was like a bunch of poop. And it was this long stream of poop from the entrance of the gate going out of the yard to into the yard. And I was like, huh, that's strange. I've never seen something like it literally had to be walking and pooping at the same time. And I've never seen anything like that before. So we get out the gate, my son and I, we get out the gate, and as soon as I closed the gate, I heard the Holy Spirit say, the rat race is over, and I immediately woke up, and uh, I got up, and I moved around, and I laid back down, and Holy Spirit said, get up, so I got up, I started praying, and I was like, okay, Lord, what's going on, what's up with that dream, like, um, show me what that meant, so um all morning long, I was walking around like, God, what does that mean? So he began to show me that the rat race is over. Everything, this rat has been feasting. The reason why it was so big, because it's been feasting off of your life for so long. And it's so comfortable. That's why it was just so comfortably walking around in the yard with you guys standing there because it's been feasting off the life for so long. It's been stealing and robbing and taking from your life for so long. And I was like, oh, my goodness. So I immediately sat still so that I could hear the fullness of this dream. And I wrote it down. And so I am going to read a lot. So you'll see me looking up and down, but you have to hear this because I asked God, is this just for me or is this corporately? Like, is this for everybody? And I got confirmation that it was for the body. So listen, check this out. So um, this is what he shared with me. The rat race is over. Uh, when I walked out of the gate, I left behind the rat that has been deceiving me and running around, leaving trails of poop for me to catch him. But uh, you have been found and locked up to uh, torment me no more. Um, I have walked away from you and now I'm free from your lies and your deception. So I didn't get a clear understanding of why the rat, why a rat? Because, you know, the Bible would tell us about the serpent and the dragon and the beast and things like that. But this was a rat. So I was still praying into it this morning and I was asking God, like, what, what's the significance of a rat? And so the Holy Spirit told me to look up the characteristics of a rat. The characteristics of a rat. So here, here are the characteristics of a rat. A rat. They're, um, they're social creatures. So they're not scared of you. You, you can't scare them away. Uh, they live in the underground. They build nests 
out of vegetation, feathers, paper, and various materials. So they come and they steal this stuff and then they go back underground and they make nests of this. Um, they huddle to keep warm. So they're a colony. So uh, colonies are relatively peaceful. Conflict only occurs when a new rat appears and tries to join the colony. When a fight occur, they uh, are they're seldom intense or bloody. The newcomer, if a fight is uh, for the newcomer, if a fight is lost, they leave the colony or they die. So if a new rat come in and uh, you know there's some tension there or whatever, either they'll leave or they'll die, or either they'll calm down and then it'll eventually. Uh, boil over. So poison may act to stimulate a rat, causing them to abandon their normal, shy, uh, nocturnal habits and dwell among us in the daylight. Let me read that again. Poisons may act to stimulate the rat, causing them to abandon their normal, shy, nocturnal habits and dwell among us in the light, in the daylight. Um, and then the most effective method of rat control is general cleanup to reduce habitation. So this is what God showed me. And it was confirmed. It was confirmed. Uh, I, I watched another video of a woman of God. She came on and she had these huge huge watermelons and she was talking about how the abundance is coming it's it's coming it's here i mean if you're if you holding it and not only did she have one she had two so if you're holding it then it's here so this is what god showed me the rat comes in it still kills and destroy because we also know that it could cause fires within your home because they'll eat up the electricity electrical uh, cords and stuff in the wall and things of that nature. So they still kill and destroy. But they're social. They're social. So they could dwell among you, still and kill and destroy it, but you walking around in that poop. You walking around in that poop. But you got to get out. And the only way you have to walk out, but then the only effective way to control the 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 infestation of the rat is to be generally cleaned up by God. You have to allow God to clean you up. It's not coming, it's here. It's not coming, it's here. The abundance of God is here. The supernatural abundance of God is here and the rat race is over. Walk out the door, shut the gate, shut the gate, walk out the gate, shut the gate and allow God to clean you up. Oh my goodness. I did a, I did, I did a video on being patient. This ties into it because although you, you may walk out, you may not notice immediately within the natural that you are out. The rat race is over. Like it may still look the same on the surface, but y'all hear me when I'm telling you it's over. It's over. It is over. I felt that thing in my spirit. It's like I felt it break. I've, I've been going through a couple of weeks and I keep saying, oh my goodness, there was a shift. There was a shift in the spirit. I felt it, but I couldn't quite understand what was going on. And and it was like, they kept coming. It, women who know what it's like to go through um, child labor. It was like the contractions. So you will feel it. And then it may be a while, maybe a couple of hours, maybe a couple of days, and then you'll feel a contraction again. That's how it was shifting in my spirit. And then it came back to back to back to back to back. The rat race is over. The rat race is over. Population control ha has come. 
God has come. He has stepped. He's been on the scene, but now he's about to make himself known for real. Now he is about to, his glory is about to exude. Like it's about to blow up like we have never seen it before. The true children of God has arisen. They are rising in power and in might. And, and the things that we have been dealing with, the things, the poop that we have been walking around in forever is coming to an end. It's coming to an end. God had me in Isaiah 60 uh, this morning as I was as I was doing my prayer, and my meditation. Isaiah 60 is Isaiah period is just a beautiful book. It's, it's full of hope. It's, it, it gives you hope. It builds your builds your faith up. But he was talking about how leave the gates open because they're going to come and they're just all the merchants are going to come and they're just going to pour into you, pour into you. Y'all is here. It's here. And I'm going to need you to catch this. It is here. It's not coming. It's here. If only we could just get rid of our religious mindset waiting to go, waiting to be raptured up. No, we have to, we have to walk. We have to expand the kingdom of God within the earth before Jesus even come back. The word of God says that in the book of Matthew, he says that you will know, I mean, we don't know the day or the time, but in the, the kingdom will be expanded throughout all the earth prior to him coming back. So while we sitting up waiting to go to heaven, no, we have to get our minds right. We have to get right. We have to start thinking properly. We have to start believing the word of God. We have to start walking in the word of God. We have to expand the kingdom here in the earth. We, it's time out for compromising with the way that the world is the, and, and doing things the way that the world do it. I used to get frustrated inviting people to church and stuff, and that no shade, no disrespect. I I do not shade churches or anything like that. But I used to get frustrated. So I used to start asking people, like, why you don't want to come? And they said, For what? It looks just like out here. Except for out here is more fun because I don't have to be fake. And I said, My God, now it's time, it's here. So the rat race is over. Get your expectations up. Believe God for what he said he was going to do in your life. God's been telling me to encourage people for the last four years. Build whatever it is that God has put on your heart. Build it. Build it. Don't give up. I literally have notebooks on top of notebooks on top of notebooks because it's like all this building. And it's so funny how it all just started to come together now. And then to have this dream and then to have it confirmed with the with with the watermelons. And then another thing that he said to me this morning as I was meditating and praying to him is double. Everything that that rat took from you, everything that he stole from you is coming back double. It's coming back double. And I don't mean just tangible things. I don't mean just like material things. I mean inner things. Things that we had to deal with, emotional hurt, abuse from other people, shame, guilt, rejection. It's here. It's here. It's here. So be encouraged. Be, encu be encouraged. Walk out the gate. Close the gate behind you. Because the rat race is over. It's like checkmate. Checkmate. This is a game of chess. May the best man win. And we already know that God wins every time. Every time. No matter how much the enemy tries to, to distort things and, and, and lie, God always wins. He always wins. It's already a finished work. We are we just walking it out down here. It's already a finished work. Let's go to Revelations. It's already a finished work. Already a finished work. So be encouraged. Don't give up. Don't give up. And and if it don't look like it's if it don't change instantly, 
which we're going to pray and ask God for it too. But if it don't change instantly in the natural, you got to believe it in the spirit. It has already been done. And that thing going to manifest in the natural and everything around you, everything around you will shift, will shift. I had a breakdown this morning and I mean a good breakdown because I was standing in the mirror combing my little hair and I was like, God, thank you so much. I don't even look like what I look like that when I was going through. I don't even look like what I looked like last month. And I was just like, thank you, God. He is faithful. He is faithful. So I just wanted to drop that encouragement on you. The rat race is over. It's over. So pick yourself up. Even if you got to step over the poop, walk through the gate, close the gate, and and walk this thing out. Walk this thing out. Because the abundance is here. And let me tell you something. We're not leaving. We're not leaving. We are not moving without the enemy giving us giving us spoils and giving it back double. So be encouraged. Be encouraged. Stand in faith because he is faithful who promised this thing. And if you don't trust my word, let's go. Let's go back to Isaiah. Let's go back to Jeremiah. Let's go back to Daniel. Because they told us of the things that's coming. Be encouraged, you guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. The red race is over. Trust God. Get aligned with him. He, he, he's hungry. He's hungry for an intimate relationship with us. Repent. Turn back to him. Because that's his heart. Follow him. And do what he has called you to do. But he, he wants you. He's calling you home. And, and if this ain't for you, share it with somebody else. Encourage somebody else. Share it with, with whoever needs it. Because the harvest is right. The harvest is right. And the workers are few. So it's time for us to get to work to bring in the harvest. I love you guys. Be blessed. Enjoy the rest of your day. And don't let nothing, don't let nothing or no one discourage you from, from connecting, getting in that intimate relationship with God. I'll talk to you guys soon.